that we're going to have an extensive conversation with Solidaridad. It's part of the bigger network out there in the world, CSO, Civil Society Organization, trying to push forward the agenda of cocoa farming and sustaining it and oil palm plantation, and also to ensure that we have food and nutrition security. I've been joined this morning by Mr. Isaac Jemphy, who is the West African uh, manager for Solidaridad. Also, we've got a youth in cocoa uh, farming who is doing very, very well, Maose Hutor, and also Mr. Bosman, also is the Director of Communications for Solidaridad West Africa. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. Good morning. Happy Farmers Day to all of us. Thank you. How are we doing? Bye. Great. L let's, let's start the conversation this way. I know that a lot of young people have interest in farming. There are many more who also are shying away from farming. You have an agenda to push young people into farming and to sustain them. Mr. Jemphy, why the emphasis of youth in agriculture? Well, the reasons are many. Um, first of all, if you look at Africa's demographics, mm. we have about 60% of Africa's population below the age of 30. Okay. Now, agriculture is also the biggest segment mm. of various African economies. Mm. If you talk of employment, probably an average of 50 to 60% of the population is in this sector. Okay. And therefore, as the aged ones mm. phase out from the sector, definitely uh, the youth must take over. Mm. However, agriculture has been, to an extent, demonized. Mm. That is not a lucrative area for okay. many young ones to go into. Okay. So we need to change the narrative mm -hmm. by proving that you can make a good living, a good livelihood out of agriculture. Right. And it's only when we've proven that mm -hmm. through various instruments that you can get the youth to be interested. Mm -hmm. We don't just believe in the rhetorics. Youth should go into agriculture. What are you doing to get them into agriculture? Okay. And that's what so solidarity that And that's what you're doing. You're leading the charge to ensure that a lot of young people get in there. And let, I, was, I was telling my colleagues that, look, back in secondary school, you offend the law in school. The first thing, you're given a plot of land and the cattle has to go and weed. So most people grow up with the mindset that a Greek is punishment, not knowing the benefits that, it, you know, that comes along with the value chain. How do we change that mindset, for example, in Ghana and West Africa? I have asked people, why would a young man invest his resources in getting a motorbike to mm. run an Okada business? Mm. Because there's a business case for such an activity. Right. So the first thing is for us to prove the business case for agriculture to show that it's profitable. Mm. And if you did it in a mediocre way, mm -hmm. like our forefathers and parents did in their village, mm. with just the hoe and cutlass, then it's not enticing. So okay. the first thing is to prove the business case mm -hmm. that it's profitable okay. and farmers will go in, okay. or the youth will go in. Mm. For instance, if you take the average productivity of say cereals and legumes, mm -hmm. Africa is doing about a quarter of the optimum. Wow. So if you want the youth to go into agriculture and he's producing a quarter of the optimum mm. productivity, mm -hmm. then certainly he's not going to be bankable. Right. He's not going to be able to break even. Mm -hmm. And your break even point is indeed very high. Right. In a very competitive global economy, you cannot also compete. So those are the issues. So first is to prove the business case. Okay. Now you need the financial sector also to respond to mm. the needs of these youth. Mm. So you also have to prove the investment proposition. Okay. What is the investment case? Normally a bank would not want to give a farmer a loan to mm. go and purchase stuff. Okay. Because at times they also don't understand the crop itself. Okay. You just mentioned oil palm. Right. It will intrigue you to, to know that if you put fertilizer on an oil palm tree. Mm -hmm. It takes 36 months before the tree responds to your fertilizer. Really? Sure. So a banker who sits in the bank and gives you funds says, well, I've given you money. You've purchased a few bags of fertilizer. Mm. Well, come and pay me back after harvest. He doesn't know but that it takes 36 months. 36 months. So the tree is pregnant, 36 months with your fertilizer <laughs> until it delivers. <laughs> so one of the things we do is to also work with these financial sector institutions okay. to understand mm. the crop so that you can develop tailor-made special purpose uh, uh, financial pa packages. products that okay. address these types of needs. Great. Let me bring Mousy in. Mousy, you're an example. You're, you're, you're in the farm now as we speak. What does the young person in Ghana need 
to get into agri. I mean, Mr. Jemfi has spoken about the business sense, the proposition, and all of financing. What do we need as young people to get into farming? Well, um, young people need quite a number of things in order to get into farming. Mm. But um, I will concentrate more on um, access to capital. Okay. You know, before you can start anything like farming, you need mm. capital in order to to do your farming. Mm. And also we need um, that kind of training. Okay. And so thank God so that that is doing that. And so mm. if the youth mm. doesn't have that technical know-how on how the, he or she will go into farming, okay. how can it be? And so if you have that kind of technical training, mm. you will know exactly what you are supposed to do mm. and what you are into. T tell us how you scaled that hurdle the first time you decided that I want to go into farming. Uh, what did you do? Did you have land available? Did you have cash sitting down? Did your father give you his farm? What happened? All right, so as a um, young female like me, it was very difficult for me to get access to land mm -hmm. because um, people believe that farming is not meant for female. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so it was somehow difficult, but I was able to push through. And then um, when I, we talk of access to capital, in fact, it was hectic, mm. simply because no bank, as said earlier, no bank will be willing to give you money or give you loan in order to do your business. Mm. But then I did it through my personal savings and then through the help of my family members and okay. friends. And so the, for the skill training, so that, that has given me that. Mm. And so the, we were taking through a thorough six-month training. Mm. We did um, both practical and then the theory. Okay. Uh -huh. So with that, I was able to establish my own. What was the scope farm. of your farm? Well, now it's now two and a half acres. Wow. Yeah. Wow. How long have you been cultivating? Okay, for two years now. Wow. You've yeah. done well. Congratulations. I'm Thank proud of you. you. <laughs> a lot of uh, people will not understand this, but yeah. when it starts growing really well, we'll know. Yeah. Boswell, <laughs> let, me, let me come to you at this point and ask you, he, she mentioned that you had done some extensive training, practical and theoretical. What are the details of this training that you give to young people to, to entice them into farming, I must say? The idea behind everything we do is to professionalize farming, for mm. instance, for our young ones. Isaac already made the case for um, attracting the youth mm. when they find farming as profitable. Okay. But it is also important that as a civil society organization, mm. we do what we can deliver within okay. our mandate. Okay. So let that, that under our Youth in Cocoa program, mm -hmm. uh, financed by the MasterCard Foundation, okay. has provided what we call scales mm -hmm. for the youth. Now, under the program, we have Agro um, Academy, and then we have the Business Academy. Okay. Now, what we do under the Agro is to help them to understand the technical and then uh, all the other related skills mm -hmm. that are required mm -hmm. for them to be successful professional cocoa farmers. Okay. So training is the bedrock of the intervention that we implement under mm -hmm. um, uh, MASO, the Youth in Cocoa program. Mm -hmm. um, apart from that, we also give them um, skills, mm -hmm. life skills. Okay. Because even if they are into cocoa farming, mm -hmm. they should be able to understand what it takes, for instance, to manage um, finances, finance. okay. because many would have money and instead of investing it in cocoa farming mm. the right way or farming in the right way, mm. they do other things with right. it. So, so there, that focuses on that so that the youth would really see mm. farming as a complete business. Mm. Okay. Um, beyond that, under our um, city or the business mm. academy, mm. we also recognize that beyond farming itself, there are a number of things, business-oriented mm. uh, activities that youth could also venture as far as the um, supply chain mm. is concerned. Mm. So we are not just emphasizing on farming mm. and farming mm. and farming. For instance, we have many young ones who are interested in processing mm. cocoa. The others were also interested in providing farm management services. Okay. They sell input to the farmers. So, so the entire their value chain is exactly. taken into consideration. <coughs> exactly. So exactly. just about those who till the debt no. and plant the seed. No. Is, okay. Even though the interesting thing is that through our program we realize so for, for us the target was about 10,800 farmers. But interestingly when we started the program we've received about 11,700 farmers, young farmers who have enrolled into how, our... How do you get them? It's usually difficult because of that 
perception that farming doesn't really pay. Mm. But when they um, recognize the training we give them and how this training, um, those who have attended our trainings mm. are applying the knowledge mm. and how they begin to see mm. real results on the ground, it changes the mindset, it changes mm. perception mm. and automatically it encourages other young mm. ones within the community mm. to also want to enroll in our program. I, let me come to you. So we have seen the problem. We have situated it. Mm -hmm. We have tailored training programs and facilities to allow for young people to get in there. So we are hoping to get the returns. We're talking recently about the food glut, rice glut that's happening. What should government be doing in terms of roads, in terms of support to add to what you're doing, in terms of also working to get young people in there? What should government's role be? Well, I'd like to respond to that. Government's role must always be an enabling one, creating the conditions that allows agriculture to thrive. How do you mean? You just mentioned roads. Mm. The roads to where the farming activity takes place is a public good that has mm. to be provided by government. Mm. Uh, government needs to have the right set of policies that allow the markets to function mm. effectively. Um, if you are producing, you must target a certain market. Mm -hmm. So it's always good that you have the market end already tied. Mm. You can avoid that glut if you have also processing linked to your agricultural system. Okay. So that after you produce, it goes through the mail and it's turned into something mm. uh, uh, else through value addition processes. So I think the key role of government is one is the policy. Okay. It's also facilitating access to resources to finance. Okay. I mean, it, we need a special fund that youth can also tap into. That makes it very enticing mm. because you need patient capital to okay. go into agriculture. Right. As I just said, uh, banks want a quick turn right. around the commercial but banks. But they don't know that it takes 36 months but for your palm plantation to, right. to deliver. That's right. So you need government to work with the financial sector to place mm. those special instruments that allows the youth also to... In, in, in a regime where all the banks are looking at quick and fast packages that will bring them back their money, how do you do it? I mean, even a, a, a wholly agri-based bank that was set up by the government of, Banca, bank, uh, government of Ghana is, is now doing you know, other things up, up aside the core mandate. How do we skip that head leg, and I ask you? Well, what we are trying to do in Solidarity as part of our financial inclusion mm. approach is to first start with small village savings and loans programs. Okay where we manage those processes so that groups of farmers, mm. farmers working in associations, mm. can raise some minimum resources. Okay. And then we see how we use that to link them up mm. with the financial market, like microfinance okay. organizations. If you want inputs and you came and you told me that you have 30% upfront cash payment, okay. then the willingness of the input dealer to say, okay, let's go into a deal and I can let you have the inputs and mm. you pay back later. Mm. Mm. So yes, commercial banks will be there to play a role, but as the saying goes, be there were no more now to be ebony. If you have a little in your mouth, yeah. then you have the patience to wait for the other one to, to, well, to, to well roast it so, so you can the, enjoy. Our approach is to promote that small mm. scale mm. community mobilization of resources mm. and then linking them up mm. progressively with the financial market. And we've seen tremendous work uh, happening in our in mm. our uh, in our work right. in solidarity. Solidarity is fifty. We'll do quickly. We'll be as apologies. The activities lined up, but okay. a point of interest though, Mausi. So, do you have a ready market for your product produce? Oh yes, there are so many companies that are buying cocoa, and so you know, so that that hasn't specified as to a specific company that when you produce your cocoa, sell to this particular company, okay. but then we have so many companies. So there's ready market for you? Exactly. Okay, so you don't suffer? No. Once you harvest, there's ready market? There's ready market, Okay, yeah. because the quality is also good. It's really uh, good. But, Bosman, tell me, what activities have we lined up for Solidarity at 50? 50 years of championing agri A number of them. This morning, for instance, we are showcasing or spotlighting youth in agri and we started with you here. Mm. We are going on what we call sustainability work mm. from our office and then through the Boundary Road to the Lagos Avenue and okay. back to um, our office. The idea is we want to draw a lot more attention okay. to the need for all of us to be sensitive to the fact that we cannot continue on 
um, in this situation and mm. expect a different result. Mm. So we invite as many people as possible to okay. join us this morning in the mm. work. Where's the office? Um, at East Legon, East Legon. Uh, very close to the ANC Mall. Okay. But apart from that, we have learned a lot of lessons, 50 mm. years of implementing uh, sustainable, um, bringing sustainable solutions mm. to supply chain. Mm. We want to be able to share those experiences mm. with our partners, with stakeholders here in Ghana, to see what lessons we can learn from them. Okay. Um, because we're also a global network organization, mm. beautiful experiences from other areas that can be useful okay. to our situation here in Ghana. Mm. So we would culminate that in that um, dinner uh, gala mm. that will take place next week is a limited um, invitation, invitation right. but the idea is to share our experiences with the Ghanaian public mm -hmm. and then policy makers and our okay. partners okay. to see what we can learn in order to improve upon what right. we do. Most grateful for your time and you've been hearing from uh, the champions the direct that they've been pushing for the agenda of cocoa production especially for young people also oil palm plantation and ensuring food security and many other things. I've been joined this morning by Mr. Isaac Jemfi. He is the regional director for Solidaridad West Africa. Also, a youth in cocoa farming, Mause Hoto, and head of communication, Solidaridad West Africa, Bosman Owusu. 